are the bearing liner and the journal surface machined on the compressor forward stub shaft. The bearing liner consists of two halves fitted on the bearing housing. The liner inside faces are machined to make convergent oil clearance in which oil pressure increases around the shaft journal to support it. After machining, these faces are coated with Babbitt alloy. For lubrication, oil is supplied through the oil feed pipe to a port in lower bearing housing. Where the oil fills an annular space around the liner and is admitted inside the liner through two grooves machined at the horizontal matching edge. Oil is drained through the vertical drain slot at the bottom of the lower liner half to the journal drain cavity down to the oil drain piping. The thrust bearing major components are the thrust runner which is integrated in the compressor rotor forward stub shaft and two thrust bearings. During the normal operation of the gas turbine, the sum of axial forces induced by the air flow on the compressor stages and the hot gases flow through the turbine stages tend to move the rotor in the upstream direction so that the active thrust bearing is located on the forward side of the thrust runner. While in the transient operation during startup and shutdown, the shaft tends to move in the downstream direction where the inactive or unloaded thrust bearing is located. The active thrust bearing is a tilting pad equalizing type bearing. An equalizing type bearing is capable of sustaining high axial loads and is tolerant of shaft and housing misalignment. The main components of this bearing are the base ring, the tilting pads, upper leveling plates, lower leveling plates, shim plate, The base ring provides support for all parts of the bearing assembly and keep parts in the proper location. The pads are shaped like a sector of a ring. The bearing surface is covered with Babbitt alloy. Every pad has a hardened steel button on its back called the pad support. This pad support allows the pad to tilt slightly in any direction. The leveling plates are functionally small levers. They align the bearing pads with the thrust runner and equalize the load among the pads despite any possible slight misalignment of the shaft axis from the normal. The leveling plates are mounted on the base ring by dowels and screws such that the plates are free to tilt on their fulcrums. The load transmitted by the thrust runner to a single pad causes the pad to press on the upper leveling plate right behind it. Each of the upper leveling plates in turn is supported by one edge of two lower leveling plates. The other edges of the lower leveling plates take part in supporting the adjacent upper leveling plate on either sides. As a result of this arrangement, any excess of thrust load on a single pad is immediately shared through the leveling plates so that all bearing pads will automatically receive equal loading. For lubrication, Oil is supplied through the oil feed pipe to two ports in the lower bearing housing where the oil flows into annular space around the base ring. Then, oil flows through grooves machined on the back side of the base ring to the bearing cavity where it is carried by the pumping action of the thrust runner to the entire bearing surfaces. Oil exits at the pad's periphery to the thrust bearing drain cavity down to the lube oil drain piping. The inactive thrust bearing is a tilting pad non-equalizing type bearing. A non-equalizing type bearing is also capable of sustaining high axial loads but less tolerant of shaft and housing misalignment. This bearing is functionally identical to the active thrust bearing except that it doesn't have leveling plates. Instead, the tilting pads are directly supported at their back by the base ring. Oil control plates are installed between pads. For lubrication, 
Oil is supplied through the oil feed pipe to a port in lower bearing housing, where the oil flows into annular space around the base ring. Then, oil flows through holes on the back side of the base ring to the oil control plates, which introduce the oil directly to the bearing surface before each of the pads. Oil exits at the pad's periphery to the thrust bearing drain cavity to the lube oil drain piping. Bearing 2 is located in the center of the inner cylinder of the compressor discharge casing and held in position by straps. The bearing components are installed inside the bearing housing, which consists of the lower and the upper halves. Bearing 2 is located in a pressurized area between the compressor and the turbine. This compressed air is leaking from the high pressure packing at the aft end of the compressor shaft. Labyrinth seals are installed on both ends of the housing to prevent this air from leaking inside the housing. Since any air leakage past these seals doesn't perform any additional work, any reduction in this flow will result in an increase in the unit performance. A brush seal is installed on both labyrinth seals to minimize air leakage as much as possible. Bearing 2 has a vented cavity. The compressed air leaking from the outer labyrinth seals is vented to the atmosphere through a vent pipe mounted on the top of the housing. Inboard of the outer air seals, two pressurized labyrinth seals are located for lubricant control. Sealing air supplied through a pipe concentric with the vent pipe fills the sealing air cavity. and flows between the two rows of each of the labyrinth seals. Some air escapes to the vented cavity and the remaining returns with the lube oil. The journal bearing components are the bearing liner and the journal surface machined on the turbine forward wheel shaft. As the upper and lower housing parts are not symmetric around the liner, a liner strap is installed on the top to provide support for the liner and form the annular space for lube oil flow. For lubrication, oil is supplied through the oil feed pipe to a port in the lower bearing housing where oil fills the annular space around the liner and is admitted inside the liner through two grooves machined at the horizontal matching edge. Oil deflectors are mounted on both ends of the liner to help containing oil inside the liner. Oil is drained through the vertical drain slots at the bottom of the lower liner half to the lube oil drain cavity down to the oil drain piping. The number three bearing is located at the aft end of the turbine in the center of the exhaust frame. The bearing components are installed inside the bearing housing, which consists of the lower and the upper halves. Bearing 3 is a tilting pad journal bearing. This type of bearing is used in situations where slight misalignment is expected. Labyrinth seals are installed in housing where oil control is required. Their teeth run against rotor smooth surfaces. The sealing air flows from the cooling and sealing system through the axial tube machined at the left side of the housing and is admitted to the labyrinth seals through two ports to annular spaces surrounding the seals. Between the two rows of seal teeth, similar to other bearings, sealing air is admitted through multiple radial holes to stop oil leakage. Some of this air returns with the lube oil and some escapes out of the housing. A forward air deflector seal is installed at the forward side of the housing to prevent cross-flow, and vent holes are machined on the housing. The bearing liner of the tilting pad type consists of a retainer ring 
and five tilting pads. The tilting pads are assembled so that high pressure oil film is generated between each pad and the rotor journal surface. This produces symmetrical force on the bearing surface that helps to maintain shaft stability. Each pad is mounted to the retainer ring by two pins and supported from the backside by a pivot pin. This configuration allows the pad to rotate in two dimensions. This movement makes this type of bearing capable of tolerating small amounts of shaft misalignment. For lubrication, oil is supplied through the oil feed pipe to a port in the lower bearing housing.